Aoife Wilson, Christmas has come early for I Ian's VR Corner because I, I finally got a PlayStation 2. <gasps> PlayStation 2 or PlayStation VR 2 even <laughs> right in front of me. I'm stroking it now, which is why I got my words wrong. It's here. It's real. I've been able to play on it for a week and I can finally tell you all about it. The embongos have lifted. In every single VR corner it feels has been leading up to this moment. You've prepared your whole life for this, or if not your whole life, the last few years. <laughs> I have. I've, I'm like one of those preppers for world emergencies, but oh. instead of, you know, the, the end of the world, it's the <laughs> beginning of virtual worlds. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, I have many questions. Um, Excellent, because I have excited. much to say. <laughs> I bet you do. So, like, let's start off. Let's start off simple. You had a little bit of trouble with the unboxing. What's um, up with the packaging? Okay, so I did. It turns out a lot of people get angry at you on Twitter if you don't open a box correctly. Yeah. Um, very angry. I t the amount of people that told me I shouldn't be a games journalist weird, because that, a box opened wrong is, is very weird. There were some angry people. Who knew angry people lived on the internet? But no, the, the packaging of the PlayStation VR 2 is uh, it's, it's, it's decent enough, but um, what's quite cool about it is on the inside, it has outer packaging, and then the inner packaging is made specifically as kind of like a little storage box, so you can place oh. your PSVR 2 headset in there, and your controllers in a nice little way, and then and then it's like a flip-top box, right? So it's a lovely little storage case. That's the trouble is that the interior box, it, it doesn't have a catch on it, it's literally just a flip-top lid. And mm. if you're opening that box for the first time, not knowing this, and you turn it, the contents <gasps> just tumble out. Oh, no. <laughs> so to everyone who gets a new PSVR 2 um, through delivery or whatever, when you open it, if you want to take the interior packaging out of the outer packaging, I highly recommend taking the headset and the controllers out first and mm -hmm. then removing the box because otherwise it's very stubborn and it doesn't come out the outer packaging very well and you don't want the internet to get angry with you let no. me tell you but you can also <laughs> use it to store cats in i understand yes you can and <laughs> that now that is the opposite everyone on twitter loved that video of course they did <laughs> it's the internet cat videos yeah. are always welcome especially yeah. when they're as cute as tilly yeah so hopefully i've i've balanced it out now the <laughs> yes. <and> the love. <laughs> balance has been, been restored to the force you're alive I've, now it's all cancelled out now i'm back okay. to square one <laughs> we'll give you your badge and your gun back you can you're allowed to still be a games journalist <laughs> so how about how about setup how easy is psvr2 to get to get up and get going with well um in the written review that i've done for the site i've kind of gone from the angle of talking about how the playstation vr2 handles compared to the playstation vr1 because there are so many different headsets around and different headset um quality types and stuff yeah. but in terms of setting up the playstation vr2 compared to the playstation vr1 it is a doddle it is literally really? it's the closest to plug and play i could really have imagined sony doing there's oh, one wow. cable that you just uh, it's a usb-c cable 4.5 meters long and it literally just plugs in to the uh, USB-C port on the front of your PlayStation 5, and that's it. You, it, wow. it powers it. it, it takes the feed. Compared to the network of cables from the PlayStation VR 1, the camera, the external PSU, and all the faff that went around uh, alongside setting all that up and making sure the right HDMI is plugged into the yeah. right place, None of that is an issue here. It's literally just take it out of the box, plug it into the PlayStation 5, turn on the PlayStation VR 2 on the little button on the bottom of the PlayStation VR 2's visor, mm -hmm. and then you're guided through this really cute little setup process. Because oh. um, there's, a, there's a couple of um, new features for the PlayStation VR 2, but one of them is um, the eye tracking which mm -hmm. has um, this awesome little setup feature. Basically, there's some infrared cameras inside the visor which film your eyes and let you lets the PlayStation VR 2 and the PlayStation 5 know where your eyes are looking. Okay. So track the movement of your eyes for, for a variety of different reasons. But in order to calibrate that, what you have to do is watch a little dot float around on a, <laughs> on a black background, and then you have to watch a little dot float around on a white background. 
and then your eyes your eye tracking is basically calibrated and it gives you this little screen with some animated eyes on that completely match your eyes so if you oh, blink weird. and wink and stuff yeah yeah it does it back so you can kind of wink at yourself and stuff which <laughs> is really fun and then on the outside of those eyes are these little colored dots and if you look at them they play little musical tunes so Aww. you can look around it's like bing, blonk, bing, blonky, bing, so blonk, play blonk. music with your eyes yeah, so just wow. to test, it's all calibrated, and yeah, it works really nicely. The, I haven't seen too many implementations of it in games I've played yet. Horizon. There's a lot of really good um, accessibility op opportunities with that too, isn't oh, there? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Horizon Call of the Mountain, for instance, um, you can use, they call it gaze tracking in that game, mm -hmm. but you can use the gaze tracking to like look around the menus and select like menu That's things awesome. rather than using yeah. a thumbstick. Um, it also helps with a thing called foveated rendering, which uh, in some games that use it, it it will track where you're looking, so it will render objects in higher detail mm -hmm. than where you're not looking. So the processing power goes to only where you're looking to make it, the games look as good as possible. Oh, wow. So, you know, that's a really cool little bit of um, setup um, for that, just to make sure your experience is as good as possible. Yeah. Um, also, you can adjust your IPD, which is your interpupillary distance, because everyone's got different <laughs> sized faces, right? Different <laughs> shaped faces. Everyone's eyes are slightly further apart or closer than yeah. others. Um, and there's a little wheel on the top of the visor of the headset that you just, you, you roll and uh, it just, you know, widens or closes up the gap between the two lenses. And again, there's a that little was in the previous video. Was that in the previous one? No. <coughs> you could do it in the previous one, but in this one, it, it, it shows your eye, it, it does the eye tracking thing as oh, well. So you yeah, can yeah. see if your eyes are in the right space. So you Just know a bit more, yeah, perfectly. streamlined, isn't it? Or, yeah. or, or polished, yeah. Yeah, totally. And um, another thing that you can do with this during the setup is use the headset's see-through mode to give yourself, uh, to scan your play space so that you can play Ooh. room scale VR. So one of the problems with the original PlayStation VR was you were at the mercy of the PlayStation VR camera and mm -hmm. the lights on your PlayStation VR headset. If you weren't in the view cone of that camera, it wouldn't track. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't really spin around away from the camera or anything because you'd lose tracking. Um, here, though, the PlayStation yeah. VR 2 has, uh, it's called inside out tracking. So yeah. all your position is tracked with cameras on the front of the visor and sensors in the controllers. That way means that, you know, you don't have to rely on this camera. So you can do full scale room playing wow. um, a VR. You can spin around as much as you want or whatever. And the way it does, it, it does the initial setup of your play space is very futuristic. It feels like you're in Tron. Basically, <laughs> what it does is it, it, is it switches to this uh, see-through view, which is basically um, the cameras on the front of your headset show you the outside world oh in a gosh. like a black and white view. So, which is great because you can turn that on at any time by pressing a button on the bottom of the visor, mm -hmm. and it means if you want to reach for a drink, you're not going to accidentally oh, spill it on your lap or something. I didn't even think of that. Right. So, like all that, those times that people are like, I don't want to play VR because I won't know what's going on in the room around me. Now you can like have press a look of a around. button, and you can see your younger brother coming up to uh, kick <laughs> Put you in his the bum in your stuff. face. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so the initial first time you use that will be to set up your play space. And what happens is it switches to see-through mode. And then it does this cool, like, scanning process where it mm -hmm. scans your room. Oh and it kind of can tell where obstacles are, where the floor is, where the ceiling is. And then it will give you an approximate space where it feels like it's safe for you to play VR without smacking into yeah. something. Um, you can tidy that up with your sense controllers, like point at the floor and draw extra areas in if you need, or delete extra <laughs> areas maybe where the cat's sitting. <laughs> but it's, it's all so simple. From turning it on, plugging it in and turning it on, five minutes set up, you're good to go. And That's play amazing. whatever VR game you want. It's so streamlined. Those like those are I didn't you know I, did, I had no idea about the the inside out cameras and everything but it it makes so much sense um, yeah. and it just goes so much like so much towards those like the little things that were stopping people from fully embracing VR like they're slowly doing away with all those reasons not to play. Yeah, totally. They're, they're um, it kind of works the same way. The Quest has 
same kind of thing. But I think for people who are going from the PlayStation VR 1, which was... It was still an amazing piece of kit, but it was very limiting in terms of movement and tracking and stuff. The, the generational leap here, if you were going from a quest to this, the visuals would look great, but you'd kind of used to the tracking stuff. But going from PlayStation VR 1 to PlayStation VR 2, it, it felt like, it kind of feels like, um, I guess, that moment that you first played Mario 64 after <laughs> playing 2D Marios. It's, it's that much of a, a, of a tech increase. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, this, that is only going to apply to people who've only ever experienced PlayStation VR 1 before, that mm. kind of leap. If you've played high-end PC VR or, or wireless Quest stuff, it's not going to be as impressive. But yeah. uh, the amount of people... Who I, I reckon that the like the majority of people buying the PlayStation VR 2 are going to be people who previously owned PlayStation VR 1. True. And, you know, want to continue their journey. Yeah. And they are the people that whose minds are going to be blown the most. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So what, is the, what does it feel like uh, comparatively, I suppose, to where? Like, is it so comfortable? Is it, you know, how heavy is it? It is um, it's just as comfortable as the PlayStation VR 1. Um, there is some nice soft rubber and stuff that keeps the headset you know, gently held on your head. And there is a, a tightening dial. I don't know if you can hear it spinning. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a little dial that you can tighten <laughs> to make sure it sits on your head properly. But what what's so cool about it, and it, it was the same with the PlayStation VR 1, is you have this kind of like elasticated halo band that sits yeah. around your head. And that distributes the weight evenly mm -hmm. around your head. So when, it's, when you're wearing it, you don't really feel the weight of the visor. If you're using the Oculus Quest, all the weight is in the visor because there's a battery there there's no yeah. halo head strap so it pulls your face down it's quite uncomfortable mm, but this, whereas this is distributed kind of more evenly yeah i played i think the longest i played it in total was about five hours and it didn't feel uncomfortable um at any point uh, it didn't feel heavy mm. it didn't weigh my it didn't give me like fatigue in my yeah. head or my neck See, that was uh, what I was going to ask next was like if you have if you were going to do like a longer gaming session, do you think mm. like it would start to get uncomfortable? But five hours is pretty good going. Yeah, that it was fine. Um, when I took it off, I did have a few like imprints on my face. You know, I could feel <laughs> pressure points where it had been lying. But it's not like the quest that when I take that off, I have like r visible ridges in my skin. It just mm. I had some red points where a few bits of pressure was from the the cushioning on, on the uh, the halo band mm -hmm. um, but apart from that no it's it is very comfy very light and because of that you it's often easy to forget you're wearing it like the quest wow often i'd be moving it all the time because it was slipping down my face and this just just sat there nice and nice and gently and yeah that's I good i was very happy with how it felt nice so right okay what about the sense controllers um are they how, how different are they, you know, compared to the Move controllers? I mean, comp they are leagues ahead of the Move controllers. The Move Ooh. controllers are such... <laughs> using the Move controllers was like, I don't know, like trying to cut a steak with a spoon. You know, <laughs> you could do it, but it takes a <laughs> lot of work. Um, <laughs> and it's not always the best response. And you make a mess of things. Uh, there's, you know, the Move controllers have no... Um, thumbsticks and they're tracked by the light bars which have to be in vision of the PlayStation VR's camera yeah. otherwise they don't track at all whereas these the the sense controllers they, they feel great they're ergonomically shaped to hands really well mm. all the buttons are in like the right places the thumbsticks mean you know, there were no thumbsticks on the move controllers so you had to rely on really yeah, yeah, yeah. weird yeah. yeah really weird <laughs> control schemes but now you can thumb stick around places makes movement so much easier you've got yeah. you know you've, you've got adaptive triggers as well which i really enjoyed playing a game called after the fall with because uh, it just felt like i was holding a real gun with a trigger that you know oh my gosh stiff at first <laughs> thing you know with quick it was like yeah it just felt really, really like like sort of it does it have like haptic feedback that kind of thing it does yeah oh. they have haptic feedback in them 
rather gentle in games like Horizon, but still they gave you these subtle feelings of mm. climbing and stuff. Uh, they, yeah, they sit in the hands really well, um, and they are very light as well. Uh, I think that's because they don't have any batteries in, apart from the internal batteries. You know, you okay. don't have to put AA batteries in or anything. You so they're rechargeable, yeah. Yeah, I got about four and a half hours of play on Horizon out of it before I got my first like low battery yeah. warning. So I'm going to say about five hours each. That's not the bad. Only, yeah, the only annoying thing is you only get one charging cable in the package. So you have to find another USB-C oh, charging cable if to you want to charge them both up. Yeah. That seems the like an oversight. If there's two you need and you need them both at the same time, you feel like... I know, yeah. right? I was able to use the charging cable for my 3D Pulse headset, so yeah. it wasn't too bad. But um, it is worth bearing in mind that if you want it, because they don't come fully charged out of the box, so right. you probably want to fully charge them before you play. So yeah. it's worth having an extra USB-C cable <laughs> lying around if you didn't spend extra for the charging station. Mm. Um, I've only got really got one. I got one minor criticism okay. of the controllers, which is you can't take off the safety straps. They're built into the inside of the controller. So mm. the only way you could take the safety straps off, and obviously you shouldn't because you should wear the safety straps at all times. Mm. Uh, but if you did want to take them off, you'd have to go at them with a pair of scissors, I oh think. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, no. But Which that's a minor that one. That wouldn't look great either, would it? No. So that's only a minor one. It might affect resale value as well if you want to stick them on eBay at any point. Mm. Um, the, the major gripe I have, um, and it may just be me, maybe I've got small, weak hands, but the grip buttons I found the, um, the uh, on the sides of the controllers, they feel a little bit too flush set into the controller, and I had to squeeze them quite hard to register gripping, and that would often make me drop things and oh felt a bit clumsy. So I may have to train my brain a little bit more <laughs> to like grip tighter, but it made my index finger, which lays across the button, um, a bit sore. Quite, yeah. They fatigued a bit, and then I, yeah, st I'd forget to grip hard, and suddenly <laughs> a gun I was holding would be on the floor in Star Wars, and I'd be like, where, where did that go? <laughs> I think if you've ever used a Quest controller, mm. it's basically they fa basically feel a bit like that, but with yeah, a, the grip button is just a little less responsive. I'd say. Okay. Apart from that, though, it is miles, miles better than the move controllers and anyone coming from a move controller to this will be amazed at the the precision the fidelity like horizon call of the mountain has so many little areas and yeah. like little mini games yeah. where you can do things like wrap strings around pickaxes you've made and oh you wow get to do, yeah <laughs> these tiny little deep like really like intricate kind of things yeah that would you know, you'd never have been able to do them with the move. So, yeah, oh, wow. a uh, great improvement for control schemes. That's exciting. So we, you've kind of touched on a few already, but, like, we need to talk about the games that are available, um, mm. you know, and how, how they look and, like, how how much of an... Because, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's all about the games. How much of an improvement are they from the PSVR and, actually, all the other VR headsets that are available? Well, in terms of the graphical difference from the PlayStation VR 1, it is, again, leagues, leagues ahead. The PlayStation VR 1 had, like, a 1080p resolution or something. Like, uh, it, was, it was decent enough for what it was, but anything from about a meter away from you would get fuzzy and blurred. Mm -hmm. Distant objects would just look like smudges, and it... You know, it really wasn't the best quality for resolution, and it, it quickly got, um, you know, left in the dust by other standalone headsets and things. Whereas the PlayStation VR 2 has like 4K HDR OLED Oof. lenses, so that means the colors are so bright and crisp, and the contrast is amazing. Like the blacks are super black, mm. and the bright like so bright and um crunchy yeah and the 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 thing that really really impressed me was how distant objects because the resolution is so high distant objects stayed crisp and clear one like the horizon call of the mountain feels like it was specifically made to show off all of the good stuff of the playstation mm. vr2 and you will spend a lot of that game climbing up mountains and looking off them at the view and just going wow because everything in the distance there's 
looks crisp and clear like you were standing on the top of a mountain in real life looking out it doesn't <laughs> doesn't look like a smudgy mess like no man's sky used to do when i stood on a mountain in no man's sky and looked at the planets and was like what's that over there it's just a it's a brown speck <laughs> yeah Ooh, can't wait to explore that brown speck <laughs> no here you can be standing on a mountain and looking across and see like a giant machine wrapped across a snow capped peak in the distance and you know that it's a giant snow cap pe- a giant <laughs> machine on a snow cap peak and not just a weird smudge that could be but i don't know until i get but close. you get that sense of scale like it yeah. feels like big and open and exciting mm, it oh. is yeah it is um a graphical leap again in in of magnificence like <laughs> you know if you've been if you if you're coming from a uh, high spec playstation uh, pc vr mm-hmm. and you know, you've got a really big rig with a 4090, G, G, what are they called? RTX 4090? Uh-huh, um, yeah. I know computers. Uh, yeah, sure. And, <laughs> yeah, a really high spec Valve Index headset or something. You're not going to be as impressed. It, you, I think you're still going to be impressed by the PlayStation VR 2, but it's not going to take your breath away as much as it will for PlayStation VR 1 players who, who go up to this. Um, mm-hmm. that it, you know, that it's it's a wow moment. That I, I touch on it in my um, Horizon review, but it sta- that game starts off and you've got like a burlap sack over your head, oh so no. everything looks brown and fuzzy, <laughs> and it's kind of like the PlayStation Think that's VR an one. Joke. It, yeah, like it's not, it's, yeah, it's like a rug pull, they, the, and then they <laughs> the literal rug pull. They take it off, and all of a sudden you're just you're like, confronted Whoa. by this ultra detailed, colourful, beautiful world with like lighting effects rippling off the water and. It's actually a really clever way for them to introduce it, isn't it? (laughs) It is. It is. It is so cool. Like, there is so many um, wow moments that you are going to have playing this for the first time if you've come from a PlayStation VR 1. I'm I'm really excited for people (laughs) to try it, basically. Amazing. I feel like I I maybe know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask anyway. What's the... Because you've played quite a few games for PSVR 2 by now. What's the best one? What's your favorite one? Well... I think so far Horizon is. Yeah. Um, just in terms of being a. Well, clearly a they companion. put the most effort into it, right? Like, or it had the most support, let's say, maybe. Yeah, there's a reason why this that that game is is bundled. It's the only game bundled with a PlayStation VR 2, and that's because it has been tailor made to show off the best that the PlayStation VR 2 has to offer in terms of graphics and mm-hmm. haptics and eye tracking and all that kind of jazz in terms of gameplay i wasn't that thrilled with it i found it kind of a bit boring but um the the spectacle of it all lifts it up into like a game that i think that everybody who plays the playstation vr2 Mm. should have Uh, just because yeah it, it it will make you realize exactly what this piece of kit is is capable mm. of. Do you think like the re- reason you weren't feeling it uh, quite so much is because I mean you weren't a huge fan of the Horizon games anyway, right? <laughs> like, or the the you you know you weren't a big fan of them. Is that maybe why? That that is part of the reason why everyone in that game in Horizon is such a dick. <laughs> they are so they're so horrible to you. Like oh. no one in that game, I don't think, is nice to you. Everyone like is is rude. To you. Oh, okay. like, I'm just trying to enjoy just VR here. Stop, stuff, stop call- I don't even know what a shadow Kaja is. Stop calling me. <laughs> Leave here. me oh, alone. Yeah, please. I just want to look at the nice views. Have a nice um, time. <laughs> unfortunately, that's not the the only reason, though. A lot of it is like for a game that's set in a world where you fight giant robots, or giant robot dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. You'd think that would be the selling point, but I know. Um, it's actually about. 30% fighting giant robots and like 70% climbing okay. it, is, it is a climbing puzzle game Wow! Um, with some spectacular views and, and that gives you lots of different ways to, to, to climb and you, you get pickaxes and things you unlock mm-hmm. as you go along zip lines you can make and stuff which keeps it interesting but you know I couldn't help but look at a couple of the rock faces I was supposed to <laughs> climb and go <laughs> Oh, I wish I could be fighting a robot dinosaur right uh, now. <laughs> if you can climb, can you fall? And if you fall, is that scary? If it, you're in VR? That w- Thanks to the PlayStation, uh, the sense controllers, I fell very rarely. Uh-huh. It did happen a couple of times, and it does make you go, whoa! <laughs> but, um, you know, I w- they w- the, it's 
they just worked really well. I grabbed where I needed to grab. Um, you have the it, the game gives you a little kind of almost like Inspector Gadget style um, extend. That lets <laughs> oh, you amazing. grab things that are just out of reach, so you never have to really strain your body, and you can just boop 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 mm. boop up you go. Um, so yeah, I only fell a couple of times, and it is a little bit scary. I'm not a big fan of heights, and there are a few times where I was hanging yeah. off impossible like structures and looking mm. down below me and just like getting on a pit of my stomach fear oh. but that's that's the magic of vr cause that's you can, cool yeah you know yeah you can hang off a, a high surface in flat and you're just looking at a picture on the screen but mm -hmm. in vr you get that depth Ooh. and because because <laughs> the playstation vr 2's headset uh visuals and lenses are so high resolution. Mm -hmm. You can see the bottom really well. It's not just a smudge. Oh, God. oh no. You, just you thinking about that now, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, man. but yeah, that's probably the best. But I've played, I've played um, a load of different games. I've tried out the Star Wars games really good. Mm -hmm. um, even though you can kind of tell it's a, an updated quest game, it's just fun to hold blasters and shoot them in VR. Um, I've played Kayak VR Mirage is one of the best looking VR games, one of the best looking games I've ever played. What? It, I would 100% recommend getting that on launch. It is a very simple kayak game, but it is the most photorealistic graphics I've ever seen. Oh there was a gosh. point when I was playing it the other night and I did an Antarctic level and I saw a fin <gasps> going through the water. I was like, oh, what's that? So I paddled after it and then like I looked into the water and the water's so clean and clear yeah. and everything's so crisp. Oh God. And I, an orca whale or <gasps> something like swam underneath me and I was just I felt like I was there. Like oh. it was nuts. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, that it transported me to a different world. A that different is place. incredible. It, it was so good. Um It's funny how sometimes it's always the simplest things that are yeah. you know, that are the most like affecting really. Mm. It's like yeah. you know y yeah you can go into outer space or like go climb and fight robot dinosaurs <laughs> but like but f but knowing like the feeling of being you know paddling a boat and seeing something really cool in the water like you know it's as like that's as close as you're going to feel to it that's amazing yeah yeah it, it you know it gives you these experiences that you probably wouldn't be able to get in real life unless you spent a lot of money yep. and, or were very lucky and, mm -hmm. and here you can you can kind of almost feel what it feels like to feel the presence of a giant fish <sighs> swim underneath you so uh, actually it's a mammal ian <laughs> oh yes i mean sorry so biology is not my strong point vr is <laughs> <laughs> but here, to s you know, you mentioned uh, spending a lot of money. I mean, let's be honest. If you're getting the Horizon Call of the Mountain bum bundle, you are mm. going to be spending close to six hundred pounds on PSVR two. I guess my final and biggest question is: Do you, Ian Higton, VR specialist, expert <laughs> extraordinaire, do you think it's that's, worth it? Well, that's going to be hard to fit on a business card. <laughs> but yes, um, I do think it's worth it. Like. It's a very high price to pay, mm -hmm. and I totally understand if it puts people off, and you know people are going to struggle to get that kind of money in this kind of climate. But for the people who have pre-ordered one and are waiting on one and will get one next Wednesday, mm -hmm. I can confidently say that they will not think they've wasted their money. They will have the best time with it. Um, I, it's it's a generational leap in VR capabilities for the PlayStation. Hopefully, it'll breathe a bit of new life into VR after Meta Quest has kind of sucked a lot of it out of it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I do understand if people want to st take a step back, wait for the price to come down, and wait for some more games to come out because you know th there's no Half Life Alex yet. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still hope. Um, mm -hmm. Gran Turismo 7, um, I haven't been able to test that yet. That is, comes out on launch, as does uh, Resident Evil Village. Those two games oh. will definitely be worth playing on the headset. But a lot of the other launch games are kind of either hit and miss or people have already, you know, they're upgrades of games people may already, already have played, on the PlayStation yeah. VR. Yeah. So, you know, if you're looking to get a PlayStation VR 2, but, you know, aren't comfortable spending that amount of money. There's no harm in, in waiting for a bit. Uh, it'll still be there once the price has come down a bit and some more. And, and by that time, more games will be out as well. Yeah, um, yeah. The launch library is pretty decent though. I could definitely recommend Horizon, Kayak 
Mirage, um, Resident Evil Village, I recommend because I played that in preview. Gran Turismo 7, I've seen lots of other games journalists talk about how great it is. So, you know, that's a free upgrade if you already own it. Um, Demio's cool. After the Fall, a bit janky, but uh, I had a lot of fun with it. And Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge is, is, is very good as well. So there's still plenty of stuff uh, and yeah. games to play. But, um, you know, if, if you're struggling with cash and you want to wait, that's fine. But, yeah, anyone who has bought it is going to have the best time. Mm. That is very, I'm, you know, I, I, there's so much that I, like, as someone who's not really plugged into the, the, the VR world, um, I love hearing you talk about it because it's just like, this, this is stuff that I haven't even been thinking about. And then, you know, <laughs> you hear, you hear that it's, that we've gotten to the stage and I'm like, oh man, I really want to mm. try it. This sounds really exciting. So thank you very much for uh, talking us through it. And y you're going to show off some more of the games on the channel, aren't you? We've got some separate videos just for, just for some of your favorite games. Yes, well, there is, um, also up on this channel right now, um, is a review for Horizon, Call of the Mountain, which Lovely. is about 15 minutes long. Lots of gameplay, showing off the gorgeous visuals there, um, and a few criticisms as well. Mm -hmm. And um, also, next week, I'm going to be um, doing some launch mega streams. Um, and I'm... I, I, I've Im I'm Im I'd like to invite you and Zoe along to check out Horizon. Yes. Uh, in s in in uh, particular. Yes. And Resi Village as yes. well. Yes. <laughs> Lady <laughs> D in full like majestic, towering, terrifying glory. Uh, exactly. You know, I'm not going to um, say no to that. Yeah, and so I'll be doing. I'll be concentrating on those ones um, a bit longer than the others. But during the ex you know the the launch live stream. I'm going to try out a little bit of each game and show you, you know, what's good about them, what works with the new tech, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, come back uh, here, subscribe and all that jazz mm -hmm. if you want to hear more about PlayStation VR 2 because um, the content doesn't stop here. <laughs> There's more to come. <laughs> Always with the content, amazing. Oh man, I'm going to go watch videos of Orca whales now. Uh, Sweet. It sounds I'm awesome. Gonna, <laughs> I'm going to go and sail with them. Oh, <laughs> oh, so I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks for listening to me, Jabberani, for and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.